Oh, dr nice to see you driving ships. How fast is your fastball in miles an hour? Do you want like the canonical one or the uh, like the the real time, like actual one? Because I could get the canonical one is ninety seven right down the dick. Um, how do yeah like you ever seen Tyler Matzek that? Uh, in reality, it's significantly less than ninety seven. I think you're pushing eighty at most. Well, I I can go I can go on a whole detail run on. 90, yeah, 97, nice one. It's a good fastball. What's that? Uh, mo you got to find most relief pitches, and, uh, what's that? I, I know I'm playing World of Warships, but, yeah. No, ignore that. Um, you're going to see me play... Yeah, I'm playing Warships, but let me go on this pitching round. You're going to see most relief pitches, like I am, are going to be maybe two pitch guys. So, they're going to have two primary pitches, like two really solid pitches. Most starters are going to be three pitch guys, so... Although some starters get away being two pitches, of course, depending on, you know, what pitches they are and how they throw it, right? You take a look at Kevin Gorsman. He's basically a two pitch guy. He plays off his fastball. He plays off his uh, splitter quite a lot. And if you watch videos of him pitching, you can actually see that quite well. So, uh, hmm, what do you say? So... Kevin Gorsman goes high with his fastball. He hits about 96, I think. Oh, you like baseball? Shit, which team are you? What team do you like? Uh, Sensei? Is it? Yes. What team do you like, Sensei? Uh, actually, let me let me move my model out a bit more so you can see, because I've got the whole baseball uniform going on. It's, it's fun. But yes, no, I, uh, by by nature, by trade, I am a pitcher. Although there's, there is something fun about picking up a bat. Yeah, I'm sure... Like, I'm sure you know who uh, Kevin Gorsman would be, who Garrett Cole would be. Garrett Cole is... I'd consider him like a three-pitch guy. He has his fastball of San Francisco Giants. So you do know who Kevin Gorsman is. Yes, okay. So you're about to understand exactly what I say. But yeah, Kevin Gorsman, you have your, your fastball, and he's going to put that high, and then he's going to have the splitter. And the splitter, he's going to put below the zone. And the idea is that if you tunnel your pitches, which I might actually go on this whole, what to say, Run and diatribe just to illustrate this point. I'm sure you you would know what tunneling is, but basically he starts the splitter off, and the splitter plays off the fastball quite well. Was they both the first about maybe half a quarter of the pitch's distance will look the same, and then the fastball will stay high and like rise and stay high in the zone, while the the splitter would just basically drop like a rock. And by the time you swing, you're going to swing over that. Uh, the next thing you're going to be, and so Kevin Gorsman's a starter, and the thing is, even though I, I would consider him a two-pitch guy, just playing off those two pitches, why is there Fubuki launching torps at you, man? Who knows? Uh, but, okay. oh, oh yeah, no, he exists. Uh, yeah, no. Yes, he's actually back. Yeah, he's actually back. Yeah, no, so you're going to see Kevin Gorsman will play off those two pitches but he also has a curveball and he also has a slider that he can throw in to mix it up and yeah a splitter is uh, practically a fast knuckleball with a different throw tick you can it's possible to throw a splitter as a knuckleball I think the impact is kind of the same it's gonna be a pitch that tumbles what is this dispersion man oh, that... yeah I saw that that was rough hopefully these torps get him but I don't hold my arms. They're not going to. Yes, he's bowing. Yeah. I, I think the good thing about the splitter is that one, if you have power, you can... Oh, that's cool. If you have power, you can keep the splitter quite fast. So Kevin Gorsman throws about 88, 89. Knuckle, you're going to throw around 70. And yeah, it's the different technique. So actually trying to throw a knuckle ball is impossible. It, it takes a lot of practice to throw it. And the thing about throwing an, uh, what's that, a knuckle ball is that... To be a knuckleball pitcher, you really have to... You, you you train for it, and you only train for it if you can't make it as a proper pitcher with, I want to say, real pitches. That's an unfortunate oh, death there. Uh, what, what do I have to do to have 150k yeah. damage? But forks are annoying, though. When I play on PS4, a hitter hits a pain. Even sliders are more like, yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I I think you would agree. It's that what do you say? You're gonna your splitter, your fork ball, your change up are gonna look like a fastball, and by the time you actually swing, it just drops on you. So you're only gonna push it into the ground. Sinker's sinker is kind of the same, although if you know they're a sinker ball pitcher, 
Like, I, I would consider myself a sinker ball pitcher because I, I can throw a fairly decent sinker ball. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I've left the battle. If you'd like to hop yeah, into leaving. another ship. I'm leaving as well. Uh... Oh... <laughs> 150k man. A hundred so that win. Yeah, I, I did like 70k. That was not a good battle for me, but oh well. Don't do. Uh, not tier 10. No. I'm not feeling tier 10 today. Uh, do you want to do? Play the Novorossis or the Shan with the Zetan? If you play Zetan, go for Zetan. The Sinker d did go right. Oh yeah, I'll go Zetan. Uh, the Sinker oh, most. Most people's sinker and two seam are going to be the same. So, I'm sure, you know, the two seamer for right hand pitcher, like I am, uh, will go to the right. At least, if you're looking at me from behind, the two seamer will run to the right. That's what it's called. It's called a uh, arm side run because it's going the my arm side direction, my arm side being my right arm, right? The sinker is just a different two-seamer, so instead of having horizontal motion, it's going to have... Yeah, that's the second one, okay. Uh, it's going to have vertical at, uh, motion, so yes, my sinker drops a bit to the right, but it's mainly down. And the thing is, I don't actually know why, because I've spent the longest time trying to throw a two-seamer that has that horizontal break, because there's something just, you know, really satisfying about putting a backdoor two-seamer onto a right-handed batter, where it just snakes back into the zone. But if I can, you know, play off... Oh, this is good MM. Yep. Oof. Only down, oof, please don't pitch against me. Yeah, dude, what to say? I have... Look, man, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I have four pitches, of which two are good. I have the sinker, which goes down. I have a slider, which is a bit horizontal, but mainly down. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a splitter which is down, and I have a circle change which is also down. Yeah, you're not, you're not gonna have fun against me because I think, I think that if you're gonna be a pitcher with movement, you really want to play off stuff that can create ground balls. I, I would focus. Yeah, focus is. Yeah, my slide is not good. Look, bro, I'm, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If you play against me. Everything, everything else would be lucky. Yeah, dude, I feel you. Now, if you're gonna play... Yeah, my slider, I'm not gonna lie. Canonically, it's a great pitch in real life. Fuck. I put that thing about two feet outside, if you're a right-handed batter. It would be two feet outside in, in the dirt, or it's going at your head, which is really, really unfortunate. But uh, I'm not the one in control here, so... I have... I have no idea. Um... But yeah, no. The the thing the thing about throwing a sinker ball is like where you place your sinker. Uh, same with the splitter. Same with the changeup. Because if you're throwing a sinker, yeah, I take the ball, then I get a hundred percent to play. Yeah, definitely. Just if if you're going against me, just take the ball, dude. I have no command. What's the sash? Oh, what's the sashio detection? Oh, I think it's five point four. So, oh, what do you have in the kid? Like five point eight. No, but, uh, if you're, what's that? If you're going to be playing 5.8, okay, sure. Yeah, if you're going to be playing, if you're pitching a sinker ball, it really, you, you need to keep it down. Because the way it works is you're trying to get that spin on the ball. If you play it low in the zone, it's going to drop. And consider that, I, I, I throw from three quarters position, so my arm's about 45 degrees up in the air. I don't have arm tracking, so I can't really show you where it is. Uh, th thanks for the follow, Sensei. No, but if you're... Uh, what is that? If you're going to be playing off the three-quarters position, consider in mind that the ball is going to be coming down. Right? So it's going to be coming from about, say, 1.8, 1.9 meters up. 1.7 to 1.9 meters up, and it's going to be sinking. And it's going to be coming down. So if you keep it down in the zone, it's going to look like it's going to have more drop than it actually is. Where if you keep it, I want to say, high in the zone, uh, it's going to look, it's, it's going to be flat as a cookie, and it's just going to look like a shitty four-seamer, right? So I, the, the sinker is a really nice pitch to have, but it's really great if you can, what do you say, it's, re, it's only really great if you can tunnel it off like a good four-seamer, in my opinion. Because if you can, if you have a four seamer that you can leave up in the zone, 
and that's like good and you can locate on the outside edge well that's going to be really hard to get a barrel onto right and then occasionally you throw in the sinker and it just sinks the hitter's only ever going to get on top of the ball and push it in the ground and then your shortstop can you know get it for the easy uh, easy double play. uh same with the splitter the splitter i can splits interesting because you don't throw the splitter for strikes you throw the splitter to get uh basically the k Right? Because if you want to have a good splitter, you have to end it outside the zone. Because the split is all about the tumbling action. Also, that was a really nice hit on the uh, twin. Uh, yeah, so that's what, that's in my opinion why Kevin Gorsman is so successful. Because, yeah, I'm playing poorly. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me focus on this first. Yeah, Kevin Gorsman's good in my opinion because he has that... I, I want to detect this flat. No, Kevin Gorsman has the good fastball to begin with, and then he has the splitter that plays off it really well. If you're someone like... Oh, uh, I don't know. If you're someone like Corbin Burns, you have the cutter to play off the splitter really well, right? But if you're, say, someone like me who only has the sinker, it, it, it can be pretty rough. Now, another example of a pure sinkable pitcher is Zach Britton, and in his prime, he was elite. Why? Because his... I like to pitch on PS4, fastball changeup cut. Yeah, that's and I'm I'm assuming you're talking about the show, right? Yeah. Fastball changeup cutter. If that's your three pitch combination, yeah, that's a really nice combination to have. Uh so what do you say? Like for example, when I pitch on the show, if I'm using something like Walker Bueller, right? Finest Walker Bueller, he has he has a good fastball. He doesn't I don't think he has a changeup. Uh, but he does have the cutter, and those two play off each other real well. And he has the sinker, so I can actually drop the ball as well. Which he doesn't have in real life, but shh. Don't need to tell anyone, it's, it's my favorite pitch. But yeah, no, the thing, yeah, having those pitches, especially because if your, like, cutter, or if your sinker has, like, a light break on it, by the time the batter swings to actually, you know, make contact with the ball, well, guess what? You're, uh, oh, what do you say? By the, yeah, by the time the batter swings, the pitch is basically dropped off, you know, it's dropped off its trajectory and it's going into the dirt and now you've just swung over top, or if you have hit it, yeah, it's going to be a ground ball out. Uh, I mean, slider isn't, slider's kind of the same, you want your pitches to have kind of light break just so that by the time you swing, uh, it actually does look like a fastball, you want to play off the fastball, really, because every, every good pitcher has a good fastball of some kind, and I know I'm going on and on about the sinker, but sinker, if you have a good sinker, you could probably find your way as, I don't know, a relief arm, say, if you have a good, if you have a good cutter, you could play off the relief arm, shit, Mariano Rivera had, like, the cutter and that's it, that was his go-to pitch, I know, I know in the show, they give him, like, the four seam, I think he could have thrown the four seam, but he basically only had the cutter, and it worked. And it worked really well. Why? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's because it had that light... Oh, I'm dying really badly here, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm horrible with this ship, sorry. This is not much emerging gameplay, but this is a fun conversation about pitching, so... But yeah, no, Mariano Rivera, he had the cutter, and he made a relief career out of it, and he was really good. Why? Because it had that light bite. Zach Britton in his... Yeah, I'm dead. Zach Britton in his prime in, like, 2016... 2015, whenever he had that elite Cy Young grade season, yeah, he basically played off, yeah, I'm dead, I'm sorry, uh, I guess I'll be watching my mate in the kid for the rest of this battle, yeah, no, Zach Britton had a late break on his sinker, and the thing is, he also had the slider and a fastball to play it off of, I'm pretty sure, so, if you consider that, He's going to throw a sinker that starts maybe middle or high and drops to the bottom. And that's at one speed. He, he used to throw his, I think, a maximum of about 96, although it's only down to 93 now, although he has been injured. If that's coming in at 96 and dropping, and then he throws the next pitch, you're going to think, okay, it's also going to be 96 and dropping, but it's 86, and it also has that horizontal glove side cut. Yeah, that's going to be an elite pitch mix. Same with Craig Kimbrell. Craig... Kimbrell when he was in his prime, and actually still now he does. He's a, he's a two-pitch pitcher. He has a fastball, he has a curve. His fastball he'd leave high in the zone, and his curve would play off that because it'd start off the same and then just drop. Oh, you might... This might be the end. <laughs> if 
for you and the kid. This is not good. Unser team hat die Führung übernommen. Yep. Yep. Do you just want to do like a Novorossisk or a Pulse battle because those are chill? Not really, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, is there anything specifically you'd like to play uh, play off? It's like tier 8s and 7s, to be honest. Tier 8s and 7s? Do you want to play Sean? I'd like to play Sean. Uh, double Sean's not very good, though, that's the thing. No, it's not very good. Uh, let's let's do a tier 7. Uh, sure. Shit, I might, take, I might take the hood. The hood's something I haven't played in ages. Yeah. So, if you have two good pitches, you could be a good reliever. If you have three good pitches, you could be a good starter. Of course, that's an overgeneralization, but uh, that's going to be what you want. Pitch mix is really important. I think if you've played the show, like you have Sensei, I think one thing you're going to notice is that uh, fastball pitchers get crushed quite badly. At least I've noticed. If, in, in real life, you could make a... a Fairly decent career, if I say so myself, of a fastball, change-up, breaking ball combination. But if you play, if you pitch with like Garrett Cole, for example, right? DeGrom's not a good example because DeGrom's just, uh, DeGrom, DeGrom's interesting. But if you play like Garrett Cole, right? What does Garrett Cole have? Garrett Cole has, his main pitch is going to be the four-seam fastball, which he throws about 96, 97. I've seen him get it up to 100 in real life, but... You, you're going to look about 95 to 100 on Garrett Cole, right? He has a change-up, which is nice, and he's going to have, like, a knuckle curve. And I think those are going to be his main... And, and a slider. So, let's say he has four good pitches. And that will be the show. The curve is normally pretty easy to pick up because it's so loopy and slow. Uh, the slider's all right, but you can sit slider. Four seam just goes straight. And the thing is, in the show, you can cover the entire pl plate really quickly. And, uh, change is normally fairly decent, I guess, depending on the pitcher. Uh, so, yeah, and, and it's rough, because in real life, being able to locate a fastball, like a really quick fastball, is gonna be how you can make a career. Because, let's say you put, I don't know, let's say you put a fastball on the outer half of the plate, right? Let's say, let, let's say you take me. Let's say I'm in relief, I'm pitching to... I don't know, John Carlos Stan, you know, your standard right-handed power hitter. If I can dot a fastball on the upper corner, like away, or on the lower corner away, that's going to be really hard to hit. And then if I put a fastball in the bottom, in the bottom away corner, so if I put a fastball low and away and then follow that up with the changeup, that's also going to be really hard to hit. But the show, you can just cover that so quickly. I don't know if you've swung an actual bat, but fuck, those things are heavy. And it takes a while to really, you know, get your... What do you say? It takes a while to get the bat down there. I took batting practice the other day. I used a wooden bat, and I'm not a... I'm a fairly standard guy. I'm like 5'8", 5'9", you know, average build, average strength. I'm as average as they come, right? I picked up a bat, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, my hand-eye coordination is... I'd say it's above average. It's not elite because I'm not a professional athlete, sadly. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not elite hand-eye coordination, but you're going to have... But it's all right. I, I took a swing at the bat, and being honest, even though it was slow and BPE, there's still a couple of pitches I missed, and that's just going to be how it is, because, again, it's, it's really hard to hit a round ball with a round bat. But if my coach, right, if he changed position quickly, I could not reach it. Because I would be sitting something about belt high, which is, you know, middle. I'd, I'd be sitting basically middle, middle fastball, right? And he would drop one low, and I'd swing and miss. Or he'd put one high, and I'd swing and miss. Because it, unless you're, you know, truly the elite, you can't make that adjustment. Uh, whereas in the show, you just move the left stick, and boom, you made that adjustment. And I know that's, like, a thing for gameplay, and it would be really annoying if, you know, you were to play a game like this, and then, ah. Uh, also, I'm playing this like a cruiser. I should not be playing this like a cruiser. Yeah, it would be really, it would be really annoying if, what to say, you did have to do that, and you had to basically sit the right position, otherwise you'd just be shafted, and that'd be incredibly unfun as a game, right? But at, the, but it's just in real life, it's just what you do. You just have to basically sit a location, and that's why someone like Joey Votto was really good, was he would just foul off pitches all day and all night until he could, what to say. Because he just foul off pitches and then wait for the pitch and make him stay. 
Uh, the most respect to baseball player is so hard if you do it like that. I like American football, but those are not. Yeah, no, baseball's baseball's really hard. And I, I think I think you'd agree with what I said. Hitting a round ball with a round bat is really hard, and pitching itself is actually really hard. Look, sense. I don't know if you've ever like tried like pitching before, but I'm not gonna lie. You see players like I don't know Garrett Cole is a good example because he's pretty smooth. Uh, Marcus Stroman, another good example. You just see these guys throw, and you think, oh, how hard can it be to throw a ball hard? In like in location, it's really hard. Like I've been, uh, I've been practicing about two years now, and okay, I'm gonna be real with guys. I don't have a coach uh, because I've, you know, I don't live in the U.S. Uh, I don't have a coach, right? So everything I've learned myself. But even just by studying videos and you know understanding, you know, why certain pitches do certain things to generate power. Like for example, Marcus Stroman's really good with his back leg. He sits in it and can generate a lot of power out of his like twist and drive like that. And I'm still playing this really bad, but ignore that, right? Even learning like that, it is really hard for me to place a pitch in the strike zone. There's just, it is so, it's such a fine, unique motion. And it's something that you have to be able to replicate every time that makes baseball pitching really hard. And the thing is, it's, it's not just hard, like, in the sense that it takes a lot of skill. It's also really hard on the body. Never in real life, but when you play sports with throwing the ball and use some brain, not like some old school mates, uh, then you know how hard it is to pitch and not hurt and throw bombs like they do. Like you say, with strikes, yeah, it's, it's hard. And so, and just watching some pitches, like tr the truly elite, just watching how easily they basically replicate their action, is just impressive. Like, if you take a look at Jacob DeGrom, right, he throws the same, he throws every one of his pitches exactly the same. You could overlay every single one of his, like, pitches, right? And same with their release point. And there's data on this. I, I forgot the, I forget, I think it's StatCast. Uh, but you can, you can take a look at every, the release point of every single one of Jacob DeGrom's pitches. And I'd say they're within, like, a three-inch circle. It's, probably even just a two inch so it's nuts how like how well he can replicate his motion but yeah no i agree base baseball is really difficult like i mean when you think of it this way right like what's a decent damn that dude got citadel like what's what's the decent batting average baseball if you're hitting 300 you're doing i was not expecting that uh if you're hitting 300 you're hitting pretty well right there's not many other jobs where you can say oh I'm doing my job correctly three out of ten times, and I'm doing a lead. It's... it's tough. Yeah, no, I... I honestly didn't expect to get that kill, I just kind of sh saw him as a snapshot. Just the nature of the BBs. I mean, I can talk about the hood as well. The hood's... the hood is not a good BB, but it's historical, which is why I got it. But yeah, no, I, th I think you'd agree. It's, it's... it's hard to play baseball. And even just playing for fun in a social setting, you, you just realize how difficult actually doing everything they do is. So, just my biggest respects to them, and even to like the minor league, even the guys who never make it are just so far ahead of what an average person does. CV man. Being, CVs are in an interesting place, because being 